Hi, welcome to Bright Hope Creations. I'm Kara, and today we're taking these chicks trick-or-treating through a very special neighborhood. So we're going to start by using fox costumes before and after, one squirrel from Let's Go Nuts, the bunny from Say What Spring Critters, a mouse from Dandy Day, large slim line with sliders, trick-or-treat line border, the mushroom house, and the acorn house, and the outside in stitched pumpkin, and this grassy stencil. To begin, I cut a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock from the largest of the stitched slimline rectangles, and I'm starting with this Shabby Shutters Distress Ink and ink blending that using the grassy stencil, but this grass is kind of pale, so I'm gonna fix that later. Uh, because I get a real vibrant background and I want the grass to kind of match up with that. But meanwhile, I use the other part of the mask, line that up, and I've got some squeezed lemonade right at the top. And I'm finding out where I put that grass the first time and blending in all of that squeezed lemonade. And once I have that, I thought, well, I'm going to try to brighten it up with some mowed lawn distressing and I do it's fine um, but I'm going to change it again so just hold on and watch for that and the reason I changed it is because I'm going to be putting those trick-or-treaters down there and they need a place to slide so they needed more grass to slide on so we'll uh, build that up a bit more but meanwhile I used mustard seed and wild honey and spiced marmalade, and that will be the sky. And I'm not too concerned about how well this all blends together because I'm going to uh, spray it. And uh, also I'll have those houses in front of it. So, but I wanted to get a nice vibrant background there. Now here's where I come in with some more mowed lawn and my grassy stencil. And I'm just bringing that grass line up and it is uh, blending into the yellow, so it's not a bad color to have to blend with. <laughs> so I sprayed my background and dabbed it off, and there it is. I'm coloring the houses and details by starting with cardstock from Lawn Fawn, and this is uh, fake tan. And I'm using Distress Ink. This is Rusty Hinge, and the other one was Spiced Marmalade to just give it that look of roundedness and... Uh, some depth. This is craft cardstock and paper bag and I am using some shabby shutters for that acorn and a little ground espresso on the top and then I'm rounding out that acorn with some old paper distress ink and I also come in with a little gather twigs at the bottom and that's the acorn all set the mushroom stem started as speckled eggshell cardstock with some old paper to round that out. And under the cap as well, I want to make sure that looks shaded. And then the cap itself is raspberry cardstock. And this is aged mahogany to give it some depth. And I'm also making a little awning. This awning is from the Reveal Wheel at, uh, Build a House add-on. And now I'm putting all the pieces down to see how they're going to sit together. And I like how the ink blending gave them some depth. And that's really apparent when I put this just plain piece of cilantro card stuck as the stem up there. Uh, so I want to make sure that everything gets uh, nicely ink blended. So I'm making that a little green, little brown. And uh, getting the little tendrils there as well. I'm going to add some glow to the inside of the houses with sunflower cardstock and I cut out behind the doors, just use the door as a template so that I can open those doors to some yellow and this is the line border. I'm also using spice marmalade and rusty hinge to give that a, an ombre look. I use the door and windows from the acorn house and I'm making them out of canned pumpkin and putting those onto the pumpkin 
and just now I've got all the brown pieces so paper bag and craft card stock and giving those a little uh, ink blending with gathered twigs distress ink so now it's time to start uh, putting things together and I'm cutting out the straight slider so that those trick-or-treaters can go from house to house and I'm going to keep that insert and use it behind and just assemble all the pieces so I'm putting the uh, yellow glow behind the door but I'm only gluing around the door frame so that I can open those doors because we need our people inside to give those treats to the trick-or-treaters putting on the mushroom cap and then in order to get all those little dots onto the mushroom I kept as many as I could in a piece of white cardstock that I die cut and put in glue in all those little dots. Then I can lay the white cardstock piece over it and poke them down into the matching spots. So that's kind of a fun, <laughs> I don't know, it's just kind of um, gratifying. I don't know. Anyway, uh, now I'm using a cool gray marker. This is a C1 to give them a little bit of shadow glue the window frames onto the glowing uh, window and the circle is part of the set it's a die cut so you can have that glow on behind that window and the mushroom house has them in the round and then the acorn one has them with that little peak and if you look at the door on the mushroom house it has that same peak so you can actually use the window to frame up that door and you can mix and match these on the houses too which i think is is a lot of fun all right um onto the acorn and putting that top on there i glued the windows the same way and i love the little details in here so this is a little keyhole and it has a back to it so i'm putting that glow behind the keyhole as well and put a little glue on the door and glue that on there and with the pumpkin house I chose to use the keyhole and doorknob from the mushroom house so kind of mix and matching there and I'm also cutting down that awning I decided I just wanted the awning up above the doorway I just thought it'd give it a little bit more of a house feel all right with this uh, acorn I am using an E84 and you can see I took off my second uh, cap because it was starting to um, leak and I didn't want it to blop out on my acorn so I took both caps off that takes the pressure out of it and it won't drip and now this is an E81 to blend those into the acorn nice thing about distress ink is that you can copic color right over it doesn't affect anything and just positioning things where i want them and gluing them down now i didn't have to put on that copic marker i think the ink blending would be fine but i do like uh, the extra added detail that it gives so this is an e44 kind of makes that window look like it's popping out of the roof there and then reinforcing those lines on the cap as well and I'm going to use the E44 right inside the lines and then this E42 to blend them to one side so it looks like there's some shadow coming from them and once I have that going both ways then I have this E41 just to kind of blend it into the rest of the the back so it's more of a smooth uh, transition and then using the e42 just giving some detail shadows to the door and the windows kind of going around that door to make it look like it's popped out a little bit and then with this e81 just blending it out a little bit more e42 doing the same thing to the mushroom house and then blending it with the E41 just to kind of tone it down a little bit, make it a little more subtle. And I'm doing that on the bottom as well and onto the pumpkin. 
And so I have a YR14, just finding where those lines would be. I'm gonna blend it out from there with the YR21. I'll get those lines established and then to shade it, I will sort of feather it. So I'm going to take it on the side and just uh, bring those lines uh, out from the dark inner line. And I'm doing it on both sides because make it look more rounded. And those lines really kind of fade into the cardstock. They start out looking dark and then they, they fade in a little bit more. And now I'm going to cover some of that up with my door. And I chose those peak type windows from the acorn house because I thought they would sort of resemble a jack-o'-lantern, uh, the eyes. And so that's kind of what I'm going for there. And then I'll put that top on the, the stem, put that back behind there, and glue on that awning and the little tendril there. And pretty much this house is all set going to put a, a little chimney on the mushroom house and add a little lantern to the side. I'm going to use a tape runner to add the houses to the background and that for me is better than gluing because if I want to move them around a little bit uh, it's easier to do that. I'm going to cut off those sides. Now you'll see there is a little overhang on the top and that doesn't bother me because I have envelopes that will handle that, but you could cut off the top as well. All right, it's time to start stamping. And so this is jet black ink because I'm going to use Copic markers and it's Copic friendly. And then now here's the fun part. These are all the little birds from the Fox costumes before and afters. And I want to decide how they're going to stand together because I only want one piece that's going back and forth. And so my little ghost is in front and front first. Uh, whatever you want in the front, you stamp that out first. And so I stamped it and I'm putting on a mask. Now I stamped that onto a piece of sticky note card and cut it out and that's my mask. And then these two birds can come on and I'm gonna mask the little guy in the pumpkin costume so that I could put the donut costume bird be behind him. And this little bird's gonna have a treat bag, and so he doesn't need a mask for that. And I can take the masks off, and there's my group of trick-or-treaters. I thought I'd focus my coloring demonstration to this group of trick-or-treaters. I'm using the YR14 and 21 on the orange parts, the pumpkin in the bag, just like I did on the pumpkin house. Just give it a little detail there and our ghost is going to be a C0. Give him just a little shadow and pink frosting on the donut because that's that's my childhood right there. <laughs> Dunkin Donuts strawberry frosted. Yeah, that's uh, raised in the 70s in the Chicago suburbs. That's <laughs> <laughs> that was the treat. All right, so a few little sprinkles in some bright colors. And then after that, it's time to get that donut colored in E21 and shaded in an E23. Those are the same colors I used on that squirrel above. And then that bunny was some E40s and the mouse was some cool grays. All right, a little green stem. And then I decided that these were gonna be yellow birds. So probably some little chickies. So they are Y11, Y13, and then Y15, just to give them that shadow coming from their costumes. And this chick is gonna have a homemade costume. She wanted to be a purple unicorn. So, so I put a little swoop of hair and a horn up there. And um, now I'm taking a Copic multi-liner and following my lines there. And they're a little thinner, so I'll come back and thicken them up. But first, uh, purple, a V04. Uh, she wanted to be a purple unicorn. 
Uh, frankly, if she had one eye, she could be a uh, one-eyed, one-horned, flying, purple people eater. <laughs> but anyway, she doesn't want that. She wanted to be a unicorn. Just um, getting those lines a little thicker so that they match the thickness of the lines on the stamp. Put a little R21 in the horn and for the hair, and then an RV04 to really pinken that up for her. I'm going to shade the body with the V06 and blend that in. And the reason I wanted this to be a purple costume is just to add more color to this group of trick-or-treaters. That's why she became a purple unicorn. <laughs> All right, putting in the color for the candy corn and the sucker and also the piece of hard candy. And now I can take the coordinating dies and cut those out with my die cutting machine. And they're all set. So these are the uh, owners of the homes. We have the mouse and the bunny and the squirrel. And the squirrel's gonna hold the heart candy kind of like he was carrying logs. <laughs> and the bunny's got that little piece of candy corn and I'm just trimming the arm of the mouse so that he has an easier time holding that sucker because you know he's got to get that out and ready for those kids to come i glued those all on them and now i'm gluing them into the houses and i wanted to see that their eyes would peek through the holes so just figuring out where to place them and they are ready to give their candy to the kids and then with the mouse, he could stick out like that, but I'm clipping off his tail and putting him in. And it just sounds so mean to clip off his tail. Pretend it's in behind the, the door, but I'm gluing him in so that he's inside the house and his little eye peeks out as well. I'm fussy cutting these trick-or-treaters with a little white border to kind of match the other die cut images. And now to make them slide from house to house. So I have a piece of craft foam and I'm figuring out where it needs to have an opening. So I'll take my pencil and just uh, draw around that. And then I'll use my trimmer to slice those lines. And I wanna make sure to at least have that eighth inch at the bottom so that it has some stability to it. Make a little piece to add to the side. And now I've got my eighth inch double-sided tape. Lawn Fawn carries this and it's such a nice tape. It tears very easily. And I'm just gonna line it up all along that one side to make sure that it is stable. And everything else is gonna have the quarter inch double-sided tape. Take off that release paper on the bottom, but I'm keeping the eighth inch one there. Just started it so that I can have it all down where I want and then I can add my eighth inch part so it wasn't flopping around and getting stuck while I was adding the foam. All right, the little piece is in and before I put anything else together, I wanna put the sentiment on and we have the trick or treat line border and I'm tucking the lines in behind the acorn and the pumpkin, and I'll glue those down in there so that it's stable. And that was the nice thing about using the tape runner. And I'm letting that trick-or-treat line border be a little bit bumped up so it has a curve to it, but I put the uh, little dot over the eye where it goes. All right, I'm making a backer now that's gonna sit in the back part of my slider. And I'm using a bit of a thicker cardstock, so it's real stable. And I'm making sure that it can go back and forth. I wanted it as big as it could be so it didn't slip out of the slider, but that it would uh, not get stuck anywhere. Putting two pieces of foam together so it'll be thicker than the background foam and just adding that to the backer so a double piece of foam on there and get that in there now i want that little grass to show so i add my slider where it goes and it works fine and that's how they're going to look on there but then i'm going to take that uh, extra piece that was cut out 
and just tape it to the front with a very low tack tape. This is a uh, sticky note tape and that way it'll go down exactly where I want it on the inside. So it's behind that backer. I hope that makes sense. Taking off all of that release paper and putting some glue on that little line and setting it on my note card. And now I can take off that little bit of tape and press it down. I'm gonna use my scissors, make sure it's lined up just right and move that little piece and make sure I've got it all pressed down so it's glued to the back. So now I can take off that release paper and add those trick-or-treaters and there they are ready to go. But I want to add some details to this card because Lawn Fawn's Acorn House has wonderful little pieces along with it and so I have these little vines that are going everywhere around the card and those leaves up at the top uh, you would think I was uh, cutting that forever but I wasn't because anytime I cut one of these pieces uh, the house pieces I would put those leaves in with them and then I'd get two leaves each time because there's two with that one little leaf die. And so that's how I accumulated all those leaves. I added a little more of the vines and now I'm positioning the leaves where I want them. And then I'll glue those down. And it really helped to have something like a jewel picker to help me put those on there. So a little leaves down on the ground and up on the tops of the houses and just anywhere I thought I could I could stick a leaf, <laughs> I did. So I really have a fall setting here. Now you could also go spooky with something like this with uh, spider webs, but I wanted a happy fall card. All right, so here they are at the first house, getting their suckers, coming on over for some candy corn from the bunny. And now open the door for the squirrel and trick or treat. Here's our little candies. They can even go back for more, although I think that these little animals will be on to them soon to say, hey, weren't you just here? <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed the card today and it inspired you to maybe create your own neighborhood. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.